I'm Armin van Buren, and I've been voted as number one DJ in the world five times. And oh my goodness, I just turned 40. as perfect as they could be at the moment. The venue we're playing at might not be available for our show. The show is being held in the Amsterdam Arena, home of Dutch football club Ajax. You see at this moment in a situation where they will play tomorrow a match against Schalke, that's at home. And next week, Donderdag, they will play another match against Schalke, that's out. Mochten ze daar allemaal heel veel doelpunten scoren en het gaat allemaal fantastisch eens winnen. Dat betekent dat we op 21 april een loting hebben om te bepalen waar de finale wordt gespeeld. De halve finale. Halve finale. Ja, is uit als het is thuis. En als het helemaal volledig kut uitpakt, dan betekent dat er op 11 mei een voetbalwedstrijd wordt gespeeld in de arena. En wij eigenlijk op 12 mei niet een show kunnen doen zoals we het nu uh, hebben gerealiseerd met elkaar. I'm about to do the biggest show of my life and it might all fall apart. If Ajax plays their semi-final in the same week as our show in the Amsterdam Arena, we won't have enough time to build up our stage. The Europa League tournament draw will decide the fate of our biggest show ever. How did we get into touring anyway? The first arm and only wasn't this big. We had the Oak Club in The Hague, which was quite popular, and we'd like to uh, invent names that had an O in it. So, so like Chesto Solo and the O's, were like, you, you can understand why. So when we had to do a night on Armin, we needed an O. That was the only reason that we, we, we sort of uh, chose only. I always thought that DJing like it originally started in the early days from nine o'clock in the evening till five o'clock at night, one DJ. Uh, I think that brings out the best in the DJ because you can sort of shape the night exactly the way you want it. That was the reason why we uh, sort of invented the, the only nights. Welcome in the party night. There's going to be a good lineup for you. Klaar. Armin van Buren solo in the O of Vela Verzoek. The most special one was the 12 and a half hour set uh, in 2002. It's still up to date, the longest set Armin ever played. That was really remarkable and people loved it. And I know there were some people at 11 o'clock when it started and left at 11.30 in the morning, the, the next morning. Uh, it was a magical night. Playing tracks all night long, this was heaven. Every time we did this, the club was packed. People were going crazy, packed in shoulder to shoulder. Magical. And because of the success in Club O, we knew we could go bigger. The first uh, real big venue with a lot of dancers and everything was Armin only in uh, Ahoy. The Ahoy in Rotterdam came along. That was pretty amazing. We were like 12,000 people. Shall we do it? Let's do it. I never expected Armin Only to be that big. Uh, it started out in Rotterdam, I think. That was the first time I, I went there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best of us. You're set at 9 o'clock. Gaan we weer, hè? Success. And the afloping drank, hè? Yeah, yeah. Blow it, blow it, blow it. No, guys, seriously, this is the, the first gig where both my managers are stressed, my girlfriend is stressed. My mom was on the phone, she was crying, she was so stressed. And for me, it's just another day at work, you know. So. Okay, there I am, just playing it cool. But of course I was getting nervous. This is the biggest thing I've ever done, and maybe the biggest thing I'll, I'll ever do. Uh, I don't know, you know, tonight's gonna be a fun night for me as well. I'm gonna try to enjoy myself, not worry too much, you know. And as the show came closer and closer, I got really nervous. I want to see it completely as it is. Let's do it completely as we do it tonight. Because now it's again half half. No, it's not. Let's do it from the podium who has nothing to look at. Let's do it as we do it tonight. Let's do it. It's even important. All the screens are now configured as tonight. And Koen, 
We willen het in vol zaalgeluid uh, ook oefenen. Ik wil het even echt doen, gewoon. Helemaal... Helemaal zoals straks. Dus ook iedereen even weg. Yeah, I guess this is my biggest flaw. I'm a bit of a control freak. He can explain himself really, really good. So why he's annoyed or uh, why he's angry. Um, but furthermore, he's, he's not going to yell or something. Even stand in schoppen. We're nu klaar mee. Hey, ik heb gevraagd of ik, om, of ik om zes uur hier kon eten. En dan krijg ik dit. Ik moet tien uur een radioshow maken en er is gewoon helemaal niet geregeld. Ja, ik heb gezegd om zes uur. Godverdomme zeg. Ik moet hier een tien uur radioshow. Sta ik hier met interviews, sta ik met volle mond. Ik kan hier niet weg, ik moet, ik moet inbreken, ik moet presentaties doen. Ik heb gisteren heel duidelijk gezegd, ik ga hier vroeger heen om op tijd te eten. Dan krijg ik dit. Mop zeg. I can be moody sometimes. It's just that I want everything to be perfect. Mr. Perfect, right? We hebben de deur al open gedaan zonder dat wij toestemming hebben gegeven. Ook fijn. There is a track called Control Freak. And uh, he's definitely one. He's a control freak. It's sometimes it's annoying because he always want to uh, keep you sharp. He's a perfectionist uh, as, a, as a performer. And that's, he, that's something he expects from the people around him as well. Uh, I think that w that's what makes him unique. I wouldn't say he's Mr. Perfect, but he's Mr. Perfectionist. Because he is not perfect yet, but he's always uh, trying to achieve to be Mr. Perfect. Ja, nou, deze moet sowieso nog ja. even op die, op die rubber staan natuurlijk. Ja. Ja. Uh, de chat moet even gewerkend gemaakt worden. Ja. Uh, even kijken hoor. Normally, for example, with an opera you work with a conductor. The conductor is in charge of the music. So he's actually the one who's telling everybody in which tempo something is happening. He's kind of a conductor as well. He's actually in charge of the show. And we all follow him. So he types actually messages to us very short during the show. Yeah, I need some water or there's a funny guy uh, there who's trying to climb over the fence or he warns us about fights in the, uh, you know, if there's a small fight going on, he says, guys, there's a fight between two girls going on in the you know, stage left or whatever. He oversees the whole, so he also comes with the information sometimes, but he also tells us what he's going to do next. Well, during the first show, I didn't feel much like a conductor. I mostly try to keep my food inside and not let the nervousness get the better of me. The first time playing a solo show this big, I really didn't know what I was up against. Let the ship set sail. This is Armin only. I hope you have a beep when you uh, cut this, but this is fucking surreal. <laughs> beep! From there on, the shows became like bigger every year. Zijn we weer, eh? Armin Only is a solo show in which I play an extended set longer than four hours where I bring a group of artists along with me. Dancers, musicians and singers. And whereas the first Armin Only shows were just in the Netherlands, we soon took the whole production on the road to other countries as well. Yeah, you want to have a good eh? Jackie. Good, eh? Not normal, not normal. I've met him, I think, 20 years ago, and he just like, yeah, he looks like a like a student. I said it polite, he was a student, but he was more like the, the nerd guy because he was really like a producer and always making music. And then after a couple of years, he turned more into a cool guy. But in the beginning, he was really a nerd for me, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's pretend I didn't hear that. After all, we took Armin only pretty far. I think Armin Only is a one-of-a-kind show because there is no other DJ uh, doing this touring the world with so many people. Every tour is a unique experience and feels like a high school trip. It means working hard, long hours and a lot of traveling. 
And with that, I can be pretty demanding. You know, we have to keep it fun with each other. And if you see each other week in, week out, sometimes uh, the artists, the dancers have to wait for a long time, have to stay backstage in not the most fanciest dressing rooms we have. I think that's the uh, challenging thing on during the tour. What do you now? Een hour. Regel het even en uh, bel mij als je het nodig hebt. Nee, ik, ik heb ik helemaal niks van je nodig. Ik wil, ik wil heel graag helpen met die klik uit te zoeken en shit. Nee, maar als ja, ik de hele tijd hoor, ja, moet je nou, dan kan ik ook niks hoor. Ja. Oh, ah, het, ah, eh, dan moet je even spanningproblemen oplossen. Ik zie die guys almost more dan ik mijn vrouw en kids. So, um, Sometimes you get fed up with them and you know you call each other names and then in the end you, you love them. We call it the Arm Only family. Yeah. We have a group app with each other and that's where we just ch chat and hey, we're there, come and have a coffee, whatever. And also practical information of course. But yeah, when you tour the world with each other, it's you become a family. special bond between everybody involved. I was a little bit surprised that the Arm and Only concept took over and that they kept the name because it was sort of invented for the O Dance Theatre Club in The Hague. And um, it was of course an honor that they took it to Rotterdam for the first show, but that it toured the world and like now is going to the arena. That's, that's unbelievable. Uh, we hope to get to the arena, but other than that, yes, we took the name around the world. In a way, we were at the right time, at the right place. Our scene was exploding and we were there. We went to three or four countries, to three or four cities. We were the first EDM act, EDM show of that whole country. So nobody went to an event like that before in a whole country and we were there like pioneers. And there's some problem with the stage right now. Why you tell me what this is for me? Tell me please. Where? Where for you see? Show me please. Here. Later one meter. This is one meter. Look at this. This is one zero three thirty five. Everything is still going very smooth. <laughs> I think we went to 45 countries in one year. So it was, we met a lot of people, we did a lot of, we had a lot of local promoters who helped us with the show. So we, all, we also learned a lot about that market. Nowadays we know that from every country, you know, okay, we have, when we go to Guatemala, we have to go to that radio, we have to go to that television station. India is actually going better than expected, to be honest. Uh, they don't have, uh, like for example, trust that we usually build the stage with, so there's a lot of wood and nails and in India everything's going a little bit slower but it all comes together in the end you know when there's a problem there's immediately 10 people all of a sudden out of the blue helping us out so it's great they really want to make this show happen and I think it's important to stress that India hasn't seen an event like this ever City. I'm one of the hot spots here and I uh, really can't wait for Madison Square Garden tomorrow night. Madison Square Garden! <laughs> the most difficult thing about Madison Square Garden is we only have a few hours to put the whole show in where in other venues we have normally a week. <laughs>
Na de show, ja. ja dan uh, onderscheiden de mannen van zich van de jongetjes. Want uh, dat is gelijk door. Dit is wat echt een tour leven. Dat is natuurlijk voor sommigen wel wennen. Maar dit is eigenlijk zoals wij standaard toeren. During the Armin Only Intense Tour in 2014, we had some, uh, how shall I put it, remarkable moments. So here we are, Buenos Aires, the only outdoor version of Armin Only. Actually, it's an abandoned theme park. It's kind of scary. There simply isn't a venue with a capacity of more than 10,000 people here in Buenos Aires that can hold this show. And of course, you're gambling with the weather gods then. When we arrived here in Buenos Aires, we were greeted by thunder, lightning, rain. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I'm doing the most important show of my life in Argentina and... Yep. I feel not really lekker so, between all the stijgen buiten. We gaan een veiligheidsoverleg in. Kijken wat de situatie is op dit moment. My main worry is the weather. Nobody, for some reason, can tell us what the weather will be. We discuss it with the team, we discuss it with Armin, and our situation is that we, we are not feeling very comfortable with this. We have like this huge security team, then we have ambulances, more than we should have. And we get the updates from the military, so we're that far up to make sure that everything goes well. The situation right now is that it's safe to perform. And if during the night the situation gets worse, we stop the show. The fans are already out there. We have opened the doors already because there were about 15,000 people waiting outside screaming to go in. So it will be, for sure, one of the nights you will never forget. My heart is a beating drum. Trust me, from here on, it can only get better. <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> What a night it was. So during my Arm and Only Embrace tour, I made sure we headed to Buenos Aires again. And guess what? Hey, it's Armin Van Buren here with a special message for all my fans in Buenos Aires. Just arrived here and uh, yeah, unfortunately uh, the weather predictions are really bad for tonight. Apparently it's going to storm, rain and it's not safe to uh, do the show tonight. So we're extremely sad. At least I signed some autographs. Right? So here I am the day after in Buenos Aires and this was supposed to be the grand finale of the Embrace tour but unfortunately the weather was so bad last night that the organization decided that it was not safe to continue with the show. But look how great it could have been man. This is where the vinyl set would have been. This is where the crowd would have stand. This was only three weeks ago, and once again, things are looking bad. If Ajax plays the same week as our show in the Amsterdam Arena, then we're out of luck. And today is the day. The draw at the Europa League tournament. Today is D-Day. Here we go. This is what it feels like. We can do the show in the arena. 
Every scenario was discussed last week. What a stress. Cancellation, moving the show, relocation. But everything seemed impossible. So from now on, it's full steam ahead. So here we are at the Brabant Halle in the south of the Netherlands for some serious preparations. So we are actually rehearsing right now in what will be the arena. Uh, we drew on the floor the size of the stage. So this will be my DJ booth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're uh, rehearsing the coming show, the best of harmony in the arena, without a stage, without actually without technique. But we're testing all the parts of the show. For the rest, we're actually setting the whole show here with artists, dancers. You see how big the arena is, because that's the middle circle, which is the B stage. And uh, right now we're rehearsing Coming Home, a track uh, with my brother on guitar. The funny thing is it's called Coming Home because uh, our mother always says to us, like, if you ever write a song, just, just sing something like, uh, oh, I love you, please, uh, baby, please come home. <laughs> How does it feel? I can't describe it, to be honest. I just, it just, just feels awesome, of course, but there's no feeling I can describe what it feels like. Yeah, we're rehearsing the distances that we have to walk. Because the, this is the most difficult thing about this whole show, is that it's so gigantic. I mean, I can't even see the end of the stage from here. So we are now creating something only for the arena. And we know the arena. Armin knows the arena. And now we're saying, if we have the opportunity to create something special for the arena, we can do it now. This is a chance. Ik denk dat op dat moment, je hebt in de track ja. op drie minuten zoveel, heb je dat, dan komt die piano erin. Yes, there's a little bit of stress, of course. Uh, deadlines are tight. Uh, not much time to actually rehearse, because the previous shows we always had like two or three weeks with the full setup. And because of the setup is that big, uh, we can't rehearse it with a full setup. So, you know, all the parts and it's still, we haven't seen it, to, uh, you know, fall in place together. So. Yeah, well, in, in my head it's all it's fine, but you know we we, ju we, ju we see it like two days before the the actual show, so well, a little bit stressed. In the next episode, you'll see the final moments before the show in the Amsterdam Arena, and that means more rehearsals, a tryout show in Den Bosch, and then off to the Amsterdam Arena. show ever.